Hey everybody! How you doing? Teching here. Um, ho hope you all had a good Valentine's Day yesterday. You know, spend it with your loved ones. Have a nice dinner. You know, all romantic and, and nice and everything. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's get into it. S-Class Hero ranked number 17. The lowest out of all of the S-Class Heroes. God knows why that's the case. <laughs> Puri, Puri, Prisoner. Okay, so uh, Puri Puri Prisoner, aside from Genos, is the first S-Class hero that we actually get to see in action, actually get to see fight. Um, of course, Genos becomes an S-Class hero in the process of the story, because like he took the Hero Association exam, and like he just is made an S-Class right away, and we kind of have an understanding of Genos' power level. Uh, I think we also see Tatsumaki as well as like a cameo, but Puri Puri Prisoner showing up on the battlefield against the Deep Sea King. This is our really, our first idea of what a fight between a demon level threat and an S-Class hero looks like. Now, Puri Puri Prisoner is ranked the lowest in S-Class. He's ranked 17. That doesn't mean he's exactly weak. It doesn't mean that he's not popular. It just means he's the lowest out of S-Class, which, hey, he's still S-Class. So even the lowest of that is still pretty impressive. Um, one came out and stated that he is capable of taking out demon level threats. He stated that that giant crow that smashed into King's apartment, that giant, you know, uh, monster bird thing, he stated Puri Puri Prisoner would be able to take that thing out. Like I said, it's easier to regard, I'm gonna put this flower down, it's easier to regard uh, monster threat levels like with various like scales to them, like there's demon minus and then like a regular demon and demon plus. Don't look at all demon level threats as the same. Uh, case in point, Deep Sea King. Deep Sea King wipe the floor with Puri Puri Prisoner uh, without much effort. However, uh, the giant crow that one stated that Puri Puri Prisoner could take down, that was also a demon level threat. So look at the crow as like demon minus or like average demon, and then look at, you know, Deep Sea King as like demon plus, you know, on the cusp of getting up there to the dragon level, but not quite there yet. Um, so while the Deep Sea King was having its rampage in City J going around, you know, takes out Stinger, takes out Lightning Max, and right about to deal the, f the finishing blow to Lightning Max, uh, Puri Puri Prisoner arrives, breaks out of prison, crashes through a wall, saves Lightning Max, then arrives on the scene. This huge, big, you know, buff-looking dude wearing a prisoner outfit, you know, uh, interesting hairstyle, you know, five o'clock shadow, you know, uh, the mascara, and he's just like, I am the S-Class hero, Puri Puri Prisoner. I've escaped from prison just to see you. So, yeah, yeah. I feel like that's part of his fighting style, you know, get a, get a psychological advantage on the opponent. You know, this giant, big, buff guy shows out of nowhere and he's just like, ah, oh, you're a beautiful young man. I love to fight against you today. You'd be like, hmm, okay, this is a little strange, you know, maybe not, it might not work on monsters all too much, but against common criminals, yeah, you might get a psychological advantage there. Uh, Puri Puri Prisoner is followed closely behind by Sonic, uh, and this is, this leads into one of my favorite, uh, special chapters, like side chapters in the story, where we delve into the story of prison, where, uh, you know, after Saitama captures Sonic, he gets placed in this really high security, uh, detention center, you know, he's all bound, bound up, up like freaking Hannibal Lecter because he's so he, he he's a ninja so he can escape out of like you know common handcuffs and like a detention like a regular holding center he could break out no problem so they throw him in this like super you know special high max facility where there's like you know giant blast doors he's got to be carted through and they finally chuck him in this giant room filled with criminals that are able to bend steel with their bare hands and they could create lock picks and poison out of just everyday objects and uh, they're very mentally abusive and everything like that that and then they just chuck him in there um and the entire building itself is like you know super thick steel and concrete even sonic can't break out of it or at least he states that it'll be rather difficult to break out of it without weapons or anything um sonic eventually makes his way up the prison hierarchy you know like oh it's some fresh meat and then sonic like breaks their freaking arms and dislocates their shoulders holds them down and beats one of them over the head with a freaking like steel ball i think no he crushes his hand with one so sonic is just you know 
rampaging, having fun, basically. And then they bring up, like, well, hold on, you gotta calm down, buddy, because if you, if you yell any louder, if you cause any more mayhem, the boss is gonna get pissed off. And the boss of this cell block, of this super max detention center, is in fact Puri Puri Prisoner. And we see him up there just chilling out in his cell. He's got his sweater there. And uh, his cell, he's kind of special. He has a TV, he's got a cell phone, he's got everything in his cell, you know. And, um... They, uh, prisoners explain how he came to be in there. How did a S-Class hero, why is an S-Class hero in prison? And, um, it's not expressly stated. Like, they just don't come out and say it. What they say is that Piri Piri Prisoner, he, um, he was ch he can't resist him to, to chase after good-looking men. Uh, criminals in this case, so uh, he got put in prison for that. They they bring up a moment where there was this A class criminal on the loose, and Prairie Prairie Prisoner, you know, captured him, but he couldn't just let him leave because he was so attracted to him. So he went to prison with the A class criminal and made him his servant boy. Ugh. And we see him off to the side at what the shell of a man he has become. So um. I think we can all put the puzzle pieces together on that one. I don't need to assemble that jigsaw for you. Especially since there might be some actual jigsaw shit going on in this prison. Um, what's the best way for me to describe... Um, have you ever seen the boondocks? Like, I'm the health inspector. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah. And, and, and Piri Piri Prisoner's regard for... Like, he should be in prison. There's not even a debate on that. It's not like, oh, that's just my style. That's just my aesthetic for being a hero. I'm a hero that's a prisoner. No, he should totally be in prison. In fact, if you need any further proof for that, um, he brings up his ideology. Like, well, I just can't go chasing after regular men like law-abiding citizens, but whenever they're criminals, I that's only justice, right? And this little caption shows up at the bottom like, no, that's in fact wrong. That is, it's not okay to just do whatever you want with somebody just because they happen to break a crime first. That's not how that works. But, uh, okay. Um, so, and the deal with him is every time he sees a hero, like, a, a well, a good-looking hero that he, you know, particularly likes uh, in trouble, or he sees some issue going on, he just breaks out of the prison. He's the only prisoner in the entire place that has the ability just to break out whenever he wants. Um, and he doesn't even, it's not even like the the warden of the prison is like, we need Prairie Prairie Prisoner, like, release him. No, he literally just like, <gasps> Stinger Chan is in trouble, and he just jumps down and he strikes a pose and it's just like, hold on, you know, watch my freaking you know, box set of Gilmore Girls, guys, I'm heading out, and he just busts through the freaking, like, wall, and like, like, like I said, reinforced concrete, reinforced steel, just breaks through it like a bowling ball, and just starts heading off, and then Sonic, of course, takes the advantage of this, and he follows him, and that brings us up to where we are fighting against the Deep Sea King, so, um, in terms of his power, in terms of his special ability, he doesn't really have anything like that, he's not psychic, he doesn't have any, like, weapons, well, he has a weapon, but I'm not allowed to show you that. It's YouTube. There's a, there's there's Pornhub for that, okay? Um, he doesn't have any weapons. He likes swords or clubs or anything he uses. Uh, he fights opponents with his bare hands, just with his muscles. Uh, he does have the ability to increase his muscle mass just to boost his power. Even this is done in a rather comedic way. He has, and I shit you not here, a Sailor Moon-esque transformation, which he calls his Angel Style! where he begins to, you know, glow like, like Sailor Moon does, and he's like, yes, let's do it, man! And he breaks his muscle mass, increases several sizes. The first time he does this against Deep Sea King, he only does half power. He's like, I will use half power to gauge you. And he breaks, he rips apart the sweater he was wearing over his prisoner outfit, and he's like, oh, the, pr the, the sweater my boyfriend made me has destroyed! I will destroy you now for making me do that! So he's kind of short-sighted. He's the one that ripped it, but whatever, he's in rage mode now. And all of his techniques are also named after the angel style, so he has angel rush, angel dash, 
angel roundhouse kick I, probably i don't know he has all these techniques um and he just uh goes to attack the deep sea king punches him square in the jaw and granted it was the first time the deep sea king seemed to take any damage whatsoever because he took no damage against stinger lightning max they couldn't even touch him uh lightning max used his uh his gunpowder shoes on him at point blank range that didn't even phase him uh so that was the first time that deep sea king actually took some damage he kind of like broke his neck and he's like his jaws all broken and he's like oh dear and just breaks it back into place and just and that hurt a little but at the same time while Piri Piri Prisoner laid the beat down on him the Deep Sea King also attacked him at the same time and Piri Piri Prisoner just kind of like this it was a pretty badass moment I have to admit where he's like yeah that hurt too just a little and he just like shoots the blood out of his nose like he's a badass meanwhile Sonic is in the background and he's like yeah that did way even though he's acting tough that did do significant damage to him I can tell and Piri Piri Prisoner's like oh man this guy's a lot stronger than I figured if I I even have a hope I better go full power so that's when he uses angel style properly and uh, goes full power and um, rips off all aspects of his clothing that's the that's the running gag with Puri Puri Prisoner. That's the joke. He fights all of his opponents at full strength, absolutely butt ass naked. All right, Marota. Well, I'll I'll see where this is going. All right, we'll see. Once again, giant buff dude fighting against you, a, a giant naked guy like like breaks up a bank heist or whatever. Like, Come on, guys, we gotta get the money. We gotta get out of here. Halt, evil doers! And it's just like. Uh, uh, you know, it would it would stun you for a little bit, and then that's when Piri Piri Prisoner lays the beat down on you. So he he begins his fight with um the the Deep Sea King. He uses Angel Rush, where he just jumps into the air, and the illusionary angel wings appear behind him. Oh, I'm such a gallant figure! Oh, and then he just starts beating the ever loving crap at a Deep Sea King. However, it doesn't hurt him. He just he's putting his guard up, and he's like, "You really do enjoy." combo attacks, don't you? And then he just begins to turn the tables and begin to beat the crap out of Puri Puri Prisoner and he gets like, he gets pummeled, he gets turned into freaking pounded beef after this was over. And um, the Deep Sea King gives him a piece of advice right before he beats him. He says, you know, hear me. You know, when you're delivering a combination attack, you gotta deliver, every singular attack has to be delivered with an intent to kill. I think Puri Puri Prisoner was more caught up in the, in the aesthetic, the grandiose nature of his skill. I I am an angel pummeling. No, you really gotta like pound it in. So that's the piece of advice Deep Sea King does. Gives him one more solid punch, and that sends Perry Perry Prisoner flying off against a building, and he's taken out of the fight. So not a great first outing, but he was the lowest ranked of the S class, so that kind of gives us an idea of their power level. But yeah, Deep Sea King, I like to think he was higher up in the demon echelon, so I don't want to I don't want to hate on Perry Perry too bad. Um, I don't think like, you know, like other S-Class heroes like Tank Top Master probably wouldn't have done much better because they're, they're just physical brawlers. That's all they are. You know, they don't have any weapons. They don't have any special skills or anything. They're just, their abilities are that they're really fucking strong and they're buff and that's all. Prairie Prairie Prisoner has an, uh, has an up on that because he can increase his muscle mass, but that's still all it is. Um... You know, so I really think most of his fights are, uh, whenever Moroda draws them anyway, they're more comedic. Like when he was fighting against Free Hugger, who, by the way, was another demon level threat in the Monster Invasion arc. Um, you know, this giant porcupine, hedgehog, bear-looking dude, covered in spikes, and every time Puri Puri Prisoner tries to punch him, he gets cut, and he's like, there has to be something I could do here, what to do, hmm. And then a bunch of people are watching him from a nearby rooftop, and they notice that, hey, he has the iron ball attached to his leg, because he's a prisoner, and like, hey, Puri Puri Prisoner, use the iron ball, smack the freaking hedgehog porcupine dude with it. But Puri Puri Prisoner's too far away, he can't hear them, so he's just like, oh yes, your fervent cheers are going to power me further just hold on I'll make sure to all give you a, a thank you kiss later my darlings but then that's when he realizes wait a second it's it's love love conquers all that's how I could truly defeat this enemy and he begins to use angel hug and he crushes the freaking porcupine he accepts all of the pain kills the damn thing and then blood's just spurting out of his like blood spurting out all over his body and over ah Oh, I can't believe how painful that would be. Oh, and then a cell phone rings in his butt. Yeah, or like a transmitter or whatever. He's like, I win! Oh, hello, this is Perry Perry Prisoner. Yeah, so, okay. 
Okay, fine. That's what we're doing. You know what? You know what? I'm fine. Let's just go with it. You know, I, I'm one that gets kind of thrown in with just the absurdity and the comedy of it. It's a giant buff dude that fights the demons of the Monster Association completely naked. Okay, we can deal with that. Fine. It's 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 One Punch Man, guys. You got to deal with it. I mean, I'm not even wearing pants right now as I film. Okay, I am. I am. I'm wearing shorts. It's actually it's actually wicked hot in this room right now, if you can believe it. Um, it, it, it's, it's the day after freaking Valentine's Day in, in the United States. It should be freezing outside right now, but it's actually fairly warm out. Um, but yeah, a anyway, um, yeah, so, uh, Piri Piri Prisoner, right? Um, in the webcomic, he doesn't do much more. He participates in the fight with the Monster Association, though I think the most important thing that happened there was not him fighting against an opponent. It was more of him, um, reassuring Darkshine, uh, in, in, into, like, getting back into the fight. So, Super Alloy fights against Garo, and at first, Super Alloy has the, has the upper hand. He's, like, taking out Garo because he's, like, he's, on top of being, he's the physically strongest out of the entire S class is Super Alloy Darkshine rank 11. Um, he's taken down Garo, and even, even the martial arts that Garo knows isn't good enough because, you know, Darkshine isn't just buff, he's also studied martial arts, like with Bang and everything. Um, well, I guess I should say Bang is technically the strongest physically because even Bang was able to take out Super Alloy Darkshine, but Bang is getting on in years, so he can't fight for as long, and his body does give out. He has less durability, less stamina. In terms of just max like physical strength and stamina and endurance and all that stuff super alloy is is tops for that but anyway yeah so he's fighting against garo but garo ascends to his monster form and just beats the crap out of super alloy and that was like the first major like loss super alloy ever had because he's like this big muscular dude and he's like check out my guns but then he loses once and he's like I'm not strong, I'm nothing, I'm pathetic. And then that's when Prey Prey Prisoner shows up and he's like, hey, you gotta get back in the fight. And he's like, no, nah, man, I can't, I'm weak. And the Prey Prey Prisoner begins to just unload on Super Alloy, just Angel Rush beat the crap out of him. But he's Super Alloy, so he doesn't. it doesn't do anything to him, doesn't even, he's just like, huh, I can tell that you're angry with me. <sighs> and Prey Prey Prisoner, he's not pulling any punches, he's hitting him as hard as he can and Darkshine's not even... Yeah, I can understand why you would be upset with me. I suck. And he, after this volley, Pretty Pretty Prisoner's like, Look at you. You took my best attack and you're not even scratched. You're not even phased. You are strong. Get up. You can fight. Your muscles are crying right now. And so that, that was like a motivational moment. He also serves to crawl through the rubble. Angel crawl through the rubble to save like um, uh, Child Emperor and everybody. He's like going through it after the, after the Monster Association base gets wrecked to rescue all the heroes. So that's what his main objective is. That's really what he does during that arc. He doesn't fight against like Garo directly or anything like that. Um, don't think he would last very long really. But he was, a good, he was good for support in that arc. He was a good support hero there. Um, he also fought against Mezogar during the Monster... In, in, no, no, during the Dark Matter Thieves, during Boros's invasion. Um, there, he took the Deep Sea King's advice to heart, and he created a new technique called Dark Angel Rush, where instead of the White Wings, there's the Dark Wings, and he, you know, every single attack delivered with killing intent. And he pummels Mesogard into oblivion, except Mesogard is that he has regeneration abilities, so, you know, beating the crap out of him is not going to do much. Although he does, you know, take out one of the marbles from one of the heads and crush them and destroy. So he does help aid in destroying Mesogard, so he was very handy there. Um, outside of that, not really much else. Uh, right now, he's gearing up in the Moroda comic to get in, you know, he's going to be part of the invasion, just like in the webcomic. Um, Nyan Nyan, which was a demon that, uh, I think a demon level threat that attacked the prison, uh, converted a lot of the prisoners there into monsters and they made off with them and the warden this is something interesting to find out about it the warden brings up hey you know every time you went and broke you know regulations and you broke out of the prison to be hero that counted as an infraction we're not happy that you do that it's not like the hero association broke a deal with the uh, with the prison warden or anything the prison warden is like no this guy's a criminal he needs to stay in prison it's just like yeah but he's strong so he needs to be a hero like fine you can call him a hero if you want but i'm calling him a freaking criminal and he's staying in here now he can break out whenever so it's kind of the whole thing is kind of moot it's kind of you know irrelevant but at least the warden maintains is is, is you know 
you know, perspective on that. It's not like he's just allowed to leave whenever, except in this particular circumstance, whenever they're like, hey, this monster came in, took a bunch of prisoners away, killed a lot of the guards in the process. These were good men. So, hey, Mr. Hero, if, if, if boss convict, if you think you can handle this, that's your job, then go and do it and avenge them. And he's like, yes, Mr. Warden. And he walks out and one of the, one of his members of his harem, I guess, comes up to him and is like, hey boss, I made this new sweater for you. And like, damn straight, this will give him twice the strength. I'll put it on. So, so there you go, there you go. That's where we're at right now. Um, he might have a solid fight in the Monster Association. Who knows? We might have to do something a little bit better than what we got in the webcomic. We'll see. Um, but for most for most angles, he's more of just like a comedic hero, comic relief, not meant to be like, you know, the final battle. It's Puri Puri Prisoner versus a dragon level threat. It's not going to go down that way. The same thing with like Tank Top Master. Um, they're just really buff dudes. Uh, that's all. Um, yeah, so that, that's all we got there from Puri Puri Prisoner. I I hope you enjoyed this 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 lovely this lovely video. I wanted to get this out yesterday on Valentine's Day, but I was just too wiped. And you need a certain level of energy to talk about this dude. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, he's you know he's he's a he's a good hero. He he does his job. He's he's nice to the other heroes. You know he was at the meeting. He was talking to Saitama, very respectful and everything like that. So he's not all bad. Just maybe lay off the whole forcing c convicts to be part of your private hara. Maybe lay, lay off on that a little bit and you'll be good. All right. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Uh, th thanks for watching, everybody. This is, this is Teching 101 signing out. Okay, hey everybody, how you doing? Uh, I was in the middle of taking everything down, and I forgot there was a few announcements I wanted to make at the end of this video. So the first one is my latest episode of Real Talk is out on my Viewster page right now. There's a link to that below. I discuss my uh, past with the big three, how I really got into reading Naruto, Bleach, and One Piece, respectively. I, I talk about how I got into reviewing manga on the internet, over YouTube and stuff, so uh, go check that out on my Viewster page, link below. Uh, also, tonight... I will be on the Weekly Manga Recap Podcast alongside Why Roller of Time and Rollo T. Um, there's a link to that below as well, and I believe that starts around 7 to 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I'll, I'll put out a tweet when we get started and everything like that. So go check them out if you're not a fan of that podcast. It's pretty good stuff. Um, so yeah, that, that's going on tonight. And then Viewster, you go check that out. Thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Teching, signing out properly. Later. <laughs>